this video will blow your mind. Hi, so today we're going to learn about geography. Do you know where Egypt is? Can you find that on the map? One hour later. That's right. So, which continent is Egypt on? Africa. Africa, yes. And it can be in two continents at once, right? And that's what we're going to learn today. Egypt is transcontinental. That means it lies on two continents instead of one. Let me tell you how. So the largest part of Egypt lies in the northeastern part of Africa, but there's a 60,000 kilometer square area called Sinai that lies in Asia. Sinai is a country-sized area. It's actually bigger than a lot of countries like Switzerland and Denmark about the size of West Virginia. So Sinai is really beautiful. That's where you get Sharm el-Sheikh, Hergada, Dahab, and all the beautiful beach destinations that you guys love to travel to in Egypt. Wow. Look at the border of Sinai. To our east, we have Palestine, the holy land of Al-Quds or Jerusalem and Israel. You can actually walk there. Egypt serves as a gateway between Africa and the Middle East and it's the only country in the world that is both in Asia and Africa at the same exact time. Transcontinental. You can literally stand in two continents at the same time. If you walk across the Sinai Desert, cross the Taba border, you keep walking. Depending on which direction you go, you could end up in Saudi Arabia, Jordan or Lebanon. Stop! Now let's go to the other side. If we go all the way to the west border, we'll find Libya. And if you go to the north coast, you can reach Athens in just an 11 hour boat ride or a two hour flight. You can also go to Cyprus, South Italy, and Turkey in around the same time. If you go south, cross Aswan, you will be in Sudan. So to simplify, Egypt is in Africa, Asia, it's part of the Middle East, and it's part of the Mediterranean. Egypt is literally the center of the world. And that's why there's an Arabic saying, Masr Umm Dunya, or Egypt is the mother of the world. Meanwhile. Oh shit, I forgot you. Come back, take a rest. <laughs> So, realistically speaking, crossing the Sahara Desert into Lower Africa is practically impossible without an airplane. Approximately 97% of the land of Egypt is comprised of the Sahara Desert, extending across the eastern and southern parts of Egypt. In ancient times, Egyptians mostly stayed out of the desert focusing their lives and societies on the strip of fertile land stretches from the Nile Delta down to the city of Aswan. Remember Kemet and Deshret from the last video? So the harsh Deshret or the Sahara Desert 
acted as a natural barrier between Egypt and the rest of Africa, isolated Egypt from the rest of the African continent. This is because the environment of the Sahara Desert is so harsh and deadly that the thought of even crossing it is like committing suicide. Here's why the Sahara Desert is so impossible to cross without any of our modern transportation. Number one reason is definitely the extreme heat. The desert can reach scorching temperatures, which can lead to heat stroke, dehydration and exhaustion. Second reason is lack of water. It's a desert and it's a huge one. To find water is very, very, very difficult. It's also impossible to carry enough water with you to cross the whole desert. Dehydration is a major risk. Sandstorms. The Sahara Desert always has frequent and powerful sandstorms which can reduce visibility. You can't see very well. It can also cause a lot of harm to the skin and eyes and the respiratory system. Vast stretches of barren land with little vegetation. So there's no food, there's no shelter, and navigation is really difficult. Getting lost in the desert is a serious danger. Even the desert people, like the Bedouins, the tribes that live all their lives inside the desert only know very well how to navigate the parts of the desert that they have lived their lives in. So getting lost is a serious, serious risk. And this is why 95% of all Egyptians have always and still today live only around the Nile. Speaking of water, let's talk about the water bodies in Egypt. Starting from, of course, the most important water body in all of Egyptian history, the Nile River. And we spoke about how important the Nile River is and has always been to Egyptian people in my last video. You can check it out, I'll link it over here. So the Nile is the most significant water body in Egypt and it's the longest river in Africa and one of the longest in the world. The Nile has played a vital role in the civilization and development of Egypt, providing water for agriculture and serving as a transportation route. Number two, the Mediterranean Sea. Egypt has a coastline along the Mediterranean Sea in the north. The Mediterranean coast is known for its beautiful beaches and popular tourist destinations such as Alexandria, my beautiful city, the north coast which is very close to Alexandria and is a very very popular beach destination, Marsa Matruh and Port Said. And number three, the Red Sea. The Red Sea is the most important destination for divers and marine life lovers in Egypt. People come from all over the world to see the beautiful corals of the Red Sea. So the Red Sea is located in the eastern part of Egypt. It's a major water body that borders Egypt and several other countries, including Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Sudan. The Red Sea is renowned for its stunning coral reefs, making it a popular destination, as I said, for scuba diving and snorkeling. And you can dive in the Red Sea in places like Hurghada, Sharm el-Sheikh, and Dahab. Now let's talk about our beautiful indigenous Egyptian animal. What's the first animal that comes to mind when you hear Egypt? A lot of people picture a camel when they think of Egypt. And it makes sense because Egypt does have a lot of camels and it is, like I said, 97% of Egypt is made of a desert. But let me tell you something that you might have not known before. Camels are not indigenous to the land of Egypt. Camels were brought to Egypt thousands of years ago by nomads from Arabia. But they quickly became an important part of our animal kingdom because come on, they're so perfect for the desert, right? Now let's focus on our indigenous Egyptian animals. And the first animal on our list, the Egyptian Mao. The Egyptian Mao is a domesticated cat breed that originated in ancient Egypt. It is known for its distinctive spotted coat and is considered one of the oldest known cat breeds. You can see the Egyptian Mao in a lot of our old scripts and hieroglyphs. It was a very loved cat by the ancient Egyptians. The second one, and probably the one that you're gonna be like, Oh my god, why didn't I think of that? It's the Egyptian Cobra. Egyptian Cobra is an iconic venomous snake 
historically associated with each. It's famous for its menacing appearance and the historical references to it. The pharaoh of the ancient Egyptians always had cobras on their headdresses and that symbolized power and sovereignty. Next on our list is the Nubian Ibex. The Nubian Ibex is a species of wild goat native to Egypt and other parts of the Middle East. It is known for its impressive curved horns and the ability to navigate the desert or the rocky terrains. Number four, the Dorcas gazelle, also known as the aerial gazelle, is a small graceful antelope species found in the deserts and semi-arid regions of Egypt. It is known for its slender build and distinctive markings, and it's one of my favorite in this list. Number five, the Egyptian tortoise. Egyptian tortoise is a small species of tortoise native to Egypt and neighboring countries. It is highly valued for its unique appearance and is considered one of the rarest tortoise species in the world. Number six, the saccharid ibis. You've probably seen this bird in a lot of hieroglyphs. The sacred ibis is a large bird associated with ancient Egyptian symbolism and religion. It was venerated in ancient Egyptian mythology and often depicted in hieroglyphs and artwork. A native bird to Egypt. And last but not least, the Nile crocodile. The Nile crocodile is a large reptile found in Egypt's Nile River and other water bodies. It is one of the largest crocodile species in the world and has cultural significance in Egyptian history and mythology. And that's the main reason why Egyptians never swim in the Nile. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you learned something new from my video today. Please let me know what you think of this video. And if you like my video, please share it to someone that might be interested to know about Egypt. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. Thank you so much for all your love and support. Have a nice day. Bye. It's the Egyptian Mo. Mo. How to pronounce Mo. How do you print tortoise? Tortoise. Tortoise? Are you serious?